Good evening. I'm going to uh, do the regular Antivo Shalom uh, Shir, but I'm going to start with a little bit Torah from the Kedushas Levi, and hopefully we'll get to the, to the Antivo Shalom. Uh, the reason I want to start from with the Kedushas Levi is it's it's one of my favorite Torahs. It just it has such a such an impact, uh, and I want to. As we begin this year, I want it to be in, uh, in memory of those Nebuch people who were killed in the murderous terror attack today in the Yamin area, in Eli. And uh, for all those who were injured, and with our bracha to Hashem to stop this violence from happening against your children. So I, I have posted the uh, Kedushas Levi. The first page is Kedushas Levi. The next page is the Ativo Shalom. So here's what the Kedushas Levi says. And there, there are two, two differing things. We'll get to, to both of them. At least we'll get to a part of the Ativo Shalom. Kedushas Levi says as follows. The Torah, this week's Parsha, is Parsha's Chukas. This, is, of course, is in Eretz Yisrael. Uh, in Chuslar, uh, they're still in last week's Parsha, which is uh, uh, Shalach. So the Chukas begins as follows. Zos Chukas HaTorah. This is the Chok uh, of the Torah, the statute of the Torah. Now you have to understand there's, there's, there's Chukim and Mishpatim. Mishpatim refers to laws, typically, where you understand uh, the reason for the laws. Uh, hukim are those things that you don't really understand the reason. And this Parsha talks about the purification process for somebody who has come in contact with a dead person, Tumat Mace. And the purification process involves the killing of a pora adoma, a completely red heifer upon which no yoke has been placed, and killing it and then dissolve, burning it up, burning it and dissolving it uh, into water and sprinkling the water on the, the person who became Tomei. And that's the purification process. Uh, it's, it's a very strange process because while the the water, uh, the the, uh, the water of the poradoma purifies the person it's directed at, the person who prepared it uh, becomes toma himself, uh, ritually unclean, and it's kind of a paradox. Uh, and this this whole concept of the poradoma isn't understood. People give various reasons, but they say that Shlomo Hamela, King Solomon, who was the wisest of all men, didn't understand it. So let's see what the Kedusha Slavi says. He says, Haklal, the general principle is, Kitame HaTorah V'amitzvos Heim Elmi Mikol Adam. The reason of the Torah and all the commandments they kind of run away. They're hidden from every person. Rak adam tzorich lasot v'lekayim kol haTorah, but a person has to do and fulfill all of the Torah. Machmas tzivui Hashem alav lasosam v'lekayim, only because of the commandment of God that God says you should do this. So a person has to do that because of that commandment. And this is the hint. This is the statute of the Torah. All of the Torah and all of the commandments are chukim, meaning that we think, we understand the reason for them. There are a lot of simple things that you can understand, you know, the mitzvah is between Adam, between 
one person, another person, don't steal. Uh, that, that makes makes sense logically. No, the, the reason that we don't steal is not because it's not nice to steal. Uh, we don't murder because it's not nice to murder, but we do it because it's what Hashem told us to do. So he's saying all of the mitzvos are really chukim. Notice we really, while you think you understand what's going on, you really don't. Because no reason is given by God as to the reason for, for the commandments that he makes. The most important part of fulfilling any commandment is one reason, one reason only, because God commanded it. And that's such an important concept. You know, we make a bracha, a share key to Shon Mitzvot who made us holy and commanded us to do something. And we're doing it because that's our way to get close to Hashem. Machma Sivu Hashem Aleinu, Lasos Anu Machuivim Lasos Lukainon, because of the command. That's why we do things and fulfill the mitzvot. Ubezeh Yivor, and with this it can be explained. Why the command of using the, the, the red heifer to purify somebody from uh, contact with a dead person. The general aspect is that the life force and the, the soul of a person the, the life force of a Jew and the, the holy neshama of a Jew comes right, is, in, is cut out from underneath the throne of glory of God. And the neshama and your body, your, your, your life force wants to serve God without, without stop. Without even a moment's stop. But the body, that a person has, doesn't agree to that, doesn't like that. There's this constant battle between your soul, your spiritual life force, and your physical body. And the person who merits is able to prevail over the body to do the will of the neshama, which is the will of God. The reason that the body doesn't want to fulfill the Torah mitzvahs because it doesn't understand. Uh, the body doesn't understand. The physicality of you doesn't understand the reason for Torah mitzvahs. If you understood the reason for the, for the commandments, for each of the commandments, the reason for the Torah, then your, your body would also be in tune with your neshama and want to fulfill uh, all the mitzvahs. Only because you don't know the reasons, but the neshama, which comes from under the holy uh, seat of glory of God, the neshama understands the reasons. Therefore, the neshama and your spiritual bodily force wants to always do this. And if a person merits to have his neshama uh, Conquer the materiality of his body and do the mitzvos. 
שהנשמה עובר למעלה, נשאר הגוף לבד ומטעמי הגוף. So while the, while the neshama is in the body, the neshama can sometimes prevail over the body, over the materiality of the body, and bring it to a higher level, bring it to a neshama level. But when, when the person dies, then the, the, the neshama goes up, up and that's all that's left is the, the body without this spiritual force in it. And therefore, that, that is metame uh, that makes a person spiritually unclean by coming in contact. So Lakaki says, Kiriyat Tzadikim ain't metame. The burial places of Tzadikim, of the righteous, uh, do not bring tome, do not cause a person tome. Why? Because the, the very bodies of the tzarikim, they have, they've succeeded in bringing their, their neshama to be con, totally in control of their bodies, only to, to fulfill Torah mitzvahs. So therefore their bodies don't cause a spiritual uh, uh, Uncleanliness. This is what's hinted out here in the Zos Chugas Torah. This is the Chok, the statute of the Torah. Machma Shatora Hu Chok. The Torah is a Chok. The Torah is a statute. It's something that's given without any reason given. She'enu Goli Tam HaTorah. The reason of the Torah is not revealed. And because it's not revealed, our wonderful bodies who try to live on an intellectual plane, they don't want to fulfill the Torah because they don't understand. We don't know why should we do it. And therefore, after death, there's no longer the neshoma attached. Therefore, the body becomes tama. Therefore, God commands shemis porach lasos pora letahir. To do the 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 pora adama, the red heifer to to uh, purify from this impurity, the vaj who mitame bemoso from that impurity that you came in contact with uh, with, uh, with with something who's dead. So that it's a constant it's a constant battle. The, it's a perpetual battle that we have all the time to try to have our uh, neshama, our spirituality, overcome our desire for material things. So that's, that's an important concept that the Kedushas Levi is saying, the Berditschever is saying, Zos chukas Torah, when you're doing a mitzvah, Remember, you are doing the mitzvah not because you understand what God wants you to do in the mitzvah, but you understand that you're doing the mitzvah because God tells you to do it. That's the sole purpose. Now we're going to move to the Nativo Cholom that has a little, little different, uh, different take on that. And I'm just going to interject that there are Meforshim, commentators, that say, yes, the reason, the reason for the uh, Adama was to atone for the Egel Hazav, to, to atone for the golden calf. Uh, the concept of, uh, as the as Hazal puts it, uh, the mother cow has to clean up the mess that the baby calf left. So this was to atone for that. That's one of the portions. So we'll. He may mention that. I'm not sure we're going to get to that, though, uh, in the time that we have. So let's look at the Nativo Shalom. The Nativo Shalom is on, uh, it's in the book of a midbar. It's page Kufyud, Kufyud 110. We actually studied this five years ago, but... Uh, in case you don't remember, I thought it's time to study it again. 
Zoshu Kasator Shasiba Hashem Emor. This is the the hoke of the Torah, the statue of the Torah that God commanded saying, Dabra Bene Israel, Vikhoi Lechapora Doma Tamima, take a perfect red heifer. Uh, perfect meaning that there's never, it's never been used for service. There's never been a burden put upon it. The Hakshu Maforshin, the commentators ask, they ask, why is it called Chukas HaTorah, the statute of the Torah? Shulachura, Arezu Mitzvah Prati. It's a specific mitzvah, specific commandment. It should say, this is the, the statute of purification. Or this is the statute relating to the, the red heifer. So why is Chukas HaTorah? Bando Amar Gabi Pesach. Similarly, as it says in Pe about Pesach, it says about Pesach, Zos Chukas HaPesach. This is the Chok of Pesach. This is the law of Pesach. We know it's going to be talking about the laws of Pesach. But this says Zos Chukas HaTorah. It doesn't say Chukas HaPara. And, and, and is this Parsha talking about the whole Torah? No. Uh, it, it's it, well, no, on the surface, uh, yes, in the concept of uh, chok meaning to do whatever Hashem wants without looking for a reason. So he asks the same question why? Why is this part of, of purification called the, the statute of the Torah? Also understand. What it says farther in the parsha, Zos Hatora, Adam Kiyamus Ba'ohel. Later on the parsha, it says this is the Torah relating to a person who dies in a tent. The Chazal Dorshu and the the sages explain what that means. Dorshu Mikan, that it refers to whether or not you can have any success in absorbing the Torah that you're studying. And they say, that the words of Torah do not have a lasting impression just on those who kill themselves for it, does really work for it. The Torah does not come to us by osmosis. We have to work to get it. We have to work to study, to try to understand it. So ma inyan drasha zu etzel parsha Torah. Okay, that's a nice drasha, nice interpretation. But what does it have to do with this whole concept of the purification by the red heifer? Yesh lomer. Others say shat Torah ba lalamid b'zeh. The Torah comes to teach us she inyan hatahara ain a mitzvah pratit. But this is not just a a specific mitzvah relating to uh, tumas mate. Uh, the, the tumor that comes from a dead person, rather it is a statute relating to the entire Torah. And it says, in the holy books, all of these 613 commandments are 613 crowns to the mitzvos, teaching us that we should do these mitzvos, and by doing these mitzvos, then we will be able to cleave to Hashem. That's the ultimate person, the ultimate, ultimate purpose, to come closer to God. That's the whole purpose of Torah and mitzvos. All of these give us advice as to how a Jew be able to come close to a closer relationship with God. The, the power against this attempt to come close. The very strong power against this is connected at Vekos who in The thing that is keeping us from getting closer to, to God is the aspect of Tuma, is the impurification. Uh, and not just and in this case, this is the broader use of the word tuma. It doesn't mean necessarily tumas base. It means 
letting anything from your surroundings negatively influence how you think about God. It means you're, you, you are embroiled in and surrounded by uh, thoughts that are not conducive to getting you close to God. This kind of tumor I'm talking about separates and cuts off a Jew from Hashem. This tuma includes not only the, the, impure, the ritual impurity of the body, but also of the neshama of a Jew that this tumor is trying to go grab hold of. She calls him Akib the Vekus Yehudi All this interferes with the closeness of a Jew uh, with God. She'ain oror mitabek b'baruch. A curse cannot connect to a blessing. God is a blessing. God gives us blessings. If we become Tuma, we have these things envelop our lives, that's a curse. And that curse doesn't let you come close to the blessing. Okay, nemra parsha satora Therefore, we say this partial of purity and the language of chukas HaTorah. This is really not only applicable to the Porah Duma, but to all of the Torah. That it's not just a specific commandment, but he is sowed a Torah. It's the foundation of Torah. Shayadeh hatahara through through spiritual cleanliness, through purification. Yochel Yehudi lahagia the tachlis kol hatorah she had vekus b'ashem through purification. Purification means separating yourself from those things that are impure, those things that are against the will of God. By that process, you're able to go higher and higher again. Uh, each time you try it, uh, and you get to the level where you 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 see the purpose of all the Torah being to bring you closer to Hashem. There's another aspect we could say about this. The the root. The root of all tumma and cleanliness, spiritual and cleanliness in a person is the materiality of the person. But Tahara and the purification, who he ayedeshimavatil eskomriosa. The purification comes from nullifying those material desires. Shibazana Tyre called Tumasa. From that you become pure from all the tumma. We explained previously the, at, at great length the whole aspect of how the red heifer serves to purify him. Darshan says, Shemi Rashi, Rashi, oh, Rashi says, Shinyan Pora Adoma, who lechapra masay ego. Rashi says that the whole purpose of the Puradoma is to be a, to atone for the sin of the golden calf. Adas tomo imo the cow goes and cleans up the messes made by its calf. The, the main aspect of the the, the uh, worship of the of the golden calf. Because people were going after materiality and uh, after ego. The materiality, because they wanted something physical to, to represent them before God. That's why they said, make us a calf. As they said, uh, when they miscalculated the time Moshe was supposed to return, 
Ish Moshe, we don't know about Moshe, what happened to him? We don't know where he is. So therefore, make us a golden calf, make us a calf. Shemoshe called Habito. Moshe Rabbeinu's whole life was nullification of himself to God. Shutami Bechinas Ma. It was always the aspect of Ma. Ma what? Mani, what am I? What am I? And we are what? Moshe Rabbeinu was nullifying himself without completely from any materiality and any, any ego. And they, the people, mainly led by the heir of Rab, the people that that tagged on afterwards, they were, they were just trying to get out of Egypt and were not really interested in being part of the Jewish people. Um, they couldn't stand this. They couldn't put up with this because they were used to idols. So they wanted their service to be something with materiality and an ego kind of thing. So therefore the, the, the Golden calf came out, which is a symbol of materiality. Moshe saw ego, and Moshe burned the golden calf. oto dak, and he ground it up into fine dust. He was totally nullifying this materiality. Val came, oh, no, sorry, Venimsa, and therefore it appears. He may hate her ego, Nimshachim call in Tuma, that from the sin of the golden calf, all aspects of Tuma, of impurity, arise. Val came, therefore, at Torahi, Aidevasara The purification process is to burn the red heifer. The Hainu Bitwa Homiot. What does that mean to burn the red heifer? It means to be nullifying the materiality. This was the aspect of the purification of the of the red heifer. It's it's advice to the Jew that he was able to be able to purify himself with with a purification. The aspect of who gives. Pure, purity from something that's from a who rock aideva sorof has a parents only through burning, burning the cow. And what what this means is she yisrof has called chomriosa to burn all of the material things. He calls a man shemeshuka bechomrios any yochliot tahar. As long as you are completely enmeshed uh, in this immateriality, you can't uh, become pure. This is the main, main purpose of a Jew to purify from all the Toma. Through removing and burning all the materiality, which is uh, all the aspect of Toma. This power of Tuma, the uncleanliness, the spiritual uncleanliness, is the one thing that keeps you from getting closer to God. By the Shreifa HaPora, Shemabras Chom Yosef, through the burning of the Pora, of the red heifer, and removing the materiality, Yocholi Tar Metumoso, you can become purified from your uh, spiritual uncleanliness. Velahasig as Chukas Kala Torah, she had Vekos by Hashem and reached the level of Torah, which is the Vekos Hashem. So what he's what he's saying there is that basically when we do an Avera, we do something contrary to God's will. We have to do Tshuva for that Avera with the same intensity as we did the Avera. So if you were really uh, burning up with desire and did this Avera, the same thing, you've got to burn up 
inside of yourself to rid yourself of the source of that avera. And that's what, that's what this means. You clean yourself of that with the same degree, uh, at least with the same degree of intensity as you did the, as you did the wrong. And through that process, you will be able to come closer to Hashem. And it's a, it's a gradual process. Just as the process of becoming Tuma, uh, of getting to a state where you are not uh, spiritually clean, or you don't have any spirituality, just, that doesn't happen overnight. As we learned in uh, last week's Parsha, uh, last, well, we talked about, I think we talked about last week, but Sartem, you know, you know, he'll turn from the way, not all at once, but slowly. So too, the process of becoming tired is a slow process. You have to take it a step at a time. And that's all I'm going to read on the Nativa Chalam. And uh, my, my blessing to all of us is that we try to get rid of our ego, try to not let our material desires run our lives. Let's, let's not always be in the position of we live to eat. Let's eat to live. Let's use whatever God has given us, all these gifts, to serve God, not to serve ourselves. Amen. Thank you for listening. I'm going to uh, turn off the recording. Yes, Shakar. Yes, Shakar. Thank you for listening.